Last time, Mark and the Ghouls installed the drivetrains in the 1970 Tribute Superbird and the 1970 Plum Crazy Challenger. Today, the Ghouls race against the clock to finish up their work, including the disassembly of a 1973 Dodge Challenger, before heading north to judge the Little Creek Casino's Cruise at the Creek car show. They're coming to get you, Barbara. The unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman. And together, we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. So one of the first things I do when I get here is find my dad and see what I can help out with for the day. And like every morning, I can't find him. Hey Dave. Hey, how's it going? It's good, I'm just looking for my dad. Have you seen him? I have not. Not at all? That's negative, yeah. Okay. Not in a while anyway. Okay. So, yeah, I've been inside the car, so I might have missed him. No problem. I was just hoping I didn't have to do the, the full circle, oh, yeah. but that's what it looks like. So yep. See you in an hour. On my way I go. Yep. <laughs> See you so this morning I'm working on our upper control arms, brake lines, and adjusting the toe on the car by adjusting the tie rods on our 70 Dodge Challenger. Okay, just front end buttoned up. So I'm trying to get as much done as I can on our 1970 Dodge Challenger. Uh, Mark just informed me that we got a car show we're going to be judging up at Little Creek Casino. Bite us in the butt. There we go. Very nice. That's the way John Wayne would have done it. I like it. Go my Z bar here. So with the front end all built out, I'm now going to install the Z bar or bell crank in our 70 Dodge Challenger. Where is everybody? What are you doing? The heck is that? Uh, nothing. Nothing? No, nothing. Anyways, have you seen my dad? No. You didn't see him walk through or anything? No. Okay. Gosh, I can't find him this morning. It's like playing Where's Waldo. Yeah, pretty much. You can see this little groove around the edge these little pins right here, when that thing snaps through these little holes, it protrudes to the inside and locks into that there so this can't pull out. A Z-bar or bell crank is actually the bar that transfers all the pedal movement from the actual inside of the car. You have your, your clutch pedal, then you have a rod coming down and it goes to the Z-bar, which is shaped like a Z, and that's why they call it a Z-bar, or some people call it a bell crank. And what it does is when that one rod throws down on one end, the other end pivots, moves the rod, moves the fork inside the bell housing on your transmission uh, friction disc that disengages your clutch so you're able to shift gears. So I'm gonna put that in first. I wanna rotate it around so it's not like on the crack. Then I'm gonna start these in there like so. Like that and like that. So when this goes in there, it should go right into that channel. I can get it right here. See how it popped? Okay, hear that pop in there? See, now that thing won't, won't come out of there. But if I pull these out, then it'll pop right out. So those little pins right there catch that thing in there, and that'll literally bolt right into my frame. Installation process on the Z-Bar, it's, it's kind of complicated because you're working up above your head. If you're in the garage or laying on your back, it's even worse. Uh, but what you basically have is you have like a ball joint end on both ends of the Z-Bar, and you got an actual two-piece bushing. So you actually have to hold those two pieces of bushing together on the actual ball joint and slide the Z-Bar bell crank inside of that, you know, once it's all greased. So it's slippery, it's hard to get in there, it's hard to hold all the pieces together. 
So I kind of build one half of it out on the workbench, and then the other half he actually is on the bell housing of the car. So you gotta hold those, those, those bushings on there and slide that Z-bar in at the same time without it all falling apart, and then get it all mounted into place on the actual frame rail. So it can be a little complicated sometimes. I gotta feed that up in there. I always run it way past this way. So it's like that. Yep, I'll set this one up here so it'll just kind of sit there. Because these are never, you got to kind of hold these and shove that thing in there at the same time. So doing it on the bench is a heck of a lot easier than doing it underneath the car. But I've done enough of them where you get good. So now I got to lift this up. And that thing will go right up into this slot on the transmission, as you can see here or on the frame, drop right in there like that. Then I can tighten this down, and then you can see how that, how that moves. So there'll be a rod that goes from right here to the clutch inside. So when you push the clutch pedal down, that's what operates your, your throwout bearing here, which disengages your clutch so you can shift gears. Okay. So it works just the opposite. You think it's engaged, but it's not. It's disengaged. You need to disengage the clutch to shift. And once it's engaged, it locks in gear. Now disc slaps up there and grabs it. You have track shown. Now that I got the Z-Bar installed in the Challenger, I'll go ahead and drop the car back down, finish button up some of the interior. I got the dash coming in from Instrument Specialties. When it shows up, I'll go grab George. Um, help me put it in when it arrives. Spend the first half hour of my day looking for my dad every single day. Shocking, he's not in the kitchen. Dad! He's not back there. So I've searched everywhere for my dad and I still can't find him. Uh, I'm gonna check his top secret hiding spot, which is really just his car. Um, it's completely blacked out windows, so he likes to hide in there and talk on the phone and do other things while the rest of us run around the shop and look for him. It's a fun game. Oh, and he likes to give me crap about leaving my car unlocked. He left his car unlocked and he had like $100 in the middle console. And I know what he's gonna do, he's gonna call me a thief, but it's not because we had this laundry policy growing up where I did all the laundry and any money I found in the dryer I got to keep. So it's kind of like the same principle, you know, don't you think? Finders keepers. <laughs> Stay tuned. Because when Mark returns, the ghouls are in for an unexpected surprise. It's a celebration, bitches. No. And later, Mark and Alyssa and Cousin Dougie begin disassembling a 1973 Challenger to convert it to a 1971 with a Hellcrate engine. We're going to disassemble it in 27 minutes. Coming up on Graveyard Cars. So Larry just showed up from Larry's Interiors. He's gonna install the vinyl top on our 70 Superbird Tribute car. So before Larry puts on the vinyl top, we make sure the car's prepped, that the top is very clean, there's no imperfections in the paintwork or anything on the actual top. And then I go ahead and bag the whole car so we don't get any glue on the paint. The kind of glue that Larry uses, I know for one thing is, is a fact, is as soon as that vinyl top touches that roof of that car, it's there to stay. I mean, it's really hard to release, so we want to make sure it's going to be a one-shot deal when he puts the top on. But I don't know what kind of glue he uses. It is some potent <laughs> though, I know that. <laughs> for the most part, I mean, he's got a good half a day into uh, applying the top, so it takes a little while. Uh, Larry's got a lot of experience putting these vinyl tops on. It's really difficult to actually get the top to sit down with no seams and no, no wrinkles or anything in it. So to get that top to actually conform to the top, he's using heat, of course, on the vinyl and stretching it at the same time while he's gluing it down to the roof of the car. 
Uh, the top came out amazing. I mean, Larry does a great job. This one is over the top. It looks fantastic. So uh, good job as always. Hey, Vonda. Yeah. Have you seen my dad? So I'm still looking for my dad. And when he finally shows up, he's in a school bus. What? Uh, so we were just invited to go to the Little Creek Casinos Cruise the Creek show uh, up in Washington. We went last year. It's such a fun show. They take great care of us. So everybody's pretty stoked. The whole the whole cast is going to go up. So this year I decided to save some money. Kind of went out of my way, and this is what I do, the great gift giver. And I bought everybody a uh, tour bus, party bus, limo bus. It's a, uh, it's a school bus. Vonda, what is this? Why does he have a school bus? Why? It's a bus. Why are all the windows blacked out? <laughs> what is this? This is like a scene in, this is a scene in 48 hours. What is this? What do you think? I think it's ugly. What why do, do we have think? it here? What do you think? Okay, so are you taking kids to school, or why do we have this? Party bus. That's our party bus. That's our tour bus. <laughs> Dad. That's our tour bus, man. No. Yeah. No, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has no seat. Look, uh, yeah. No, it's party. Are you insane? Oh, my. It's a party. It's a celebration, bitches. No. Check it out. I won't yeah, do this. <laughs> So our dash arrived from Instrument Specialties for our 70 Dodge Challenger. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting all my prep work done so I can get it installed. Some of the things I do to prep out the car for the dash installation is of course, uh, get the studs out of the, the steering column area. The studs will actually impede you from putting that dash on because the studs go through the actual bottom framework of the dash. So I make sure they're out, make sure my under dash insulation's in, all my firewall insulation, all my bracing, everything is in place before I put the dash in. Uh, once the dash is installed in the car, I mean, it's pretty much ready to button up. All I have left to do is install the steering column and the seats, and we're ready to roll. A lot of people get in one vehicle, and they'll like tour the country, so like rock groups and stuff. We're, we're yeah, not doing yeah, that. We're a rock group. We're not doing that. Yeah, there you go. Huh? It's by Curious George. <laughs> Dad, I'm, I'm, we don't, they don't do tours like that anymore, like on a bus. The other day I saw him driving around in this little pickup. So he can't even Had a boy's and a girl's bike in the back. He has two kids. Yeah, I just think he's bike curious. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I tell Dave and Will about this. You ain't telling anybody about nothing. Yeah, when I tell don't them tell about anybody. This, they're not going to do it. Will won't do it. And if Will does, what? What? Don't tell anybody it? anything. Seriously, promise. You've got to promise me. Loose lips, sink ships, nobody knows. I want to surprise yeah, them. Whatever, I'm going to take it down. All right, whatever, I promise. I'm going to put it down in the storage. I'm going to put it down in the storage unit so nobody knows about it and start ordering stuff for it. Yeah. So they're going to Our be little secret. So excited. Father and daughter secret. I wish we had a different one, maybe like a cool secret. Yeah, this is a cool secret. This is. No. It's so stupid. My old that? bus number as a kid. I knew it. God, you're so. Oh, I can oh use this like exercises. Yeah, that'd be great, Dad. Dave! I Yo. found my dad. You found him? Yeah. Hey, it's only been 35 minutes. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's worse than I thought. Uh-oh. So Alyssa just informed me that Mark bought a broke-ass school bus <laughs> 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 to actually take the crew up to Little Creek Casino. The ghoul bus that he's going to make all of us ride together down to SEMA and, and to like all of our shows. You have got to be kidding me. He thinks it's the coolest thing in the world. I kind of have a little idea of why he might have bought a school bus. I feel bad because when we got the Washington trip coming up to the car show. Yeah. And I had talked to him about helping pay for gas. Oh. I asked if there was a possibility that we can get reimbursed for our fuel going to and from these car shows. Well. It turns out that now all of a sudden, a, a bus shows up, a school bus. So I feel responsible. So this is you, you're <laughs> for the bus. 
So Mark's answer to reimbursing us for our fuel, I believe, is the broke-ass bus sitting out in the parking lot. Let's go see oh, what gosh. Will had to do with it. <laughs> that is crazy. A school bus to SEMA. George. Hey, Sorry. I gotta tell you, I found my dad. Okay, you are not gonna believe what my dad just bought. What? Did you see that uh, big, that full-size bus my dad just bought? Yeah. Do you know what he's gonna do with it? No. Okay, so his plan is to use that to take everybody up to like SEMA and to like Washington for a show or whatever. It's like load everybody up in that bus and us drive together. So we're gonna be like the short bus? Well, I mean, it's kind of long. Are we gonna paint it? Oh, I don't know, what, you're missing the point here. Oh. We all have to ride together with my dad, together in a full-size bus. Vegas is 16 hours away. It's a long trip. You just don't, you don't seem very concerned about this at all, but for homies. All right, thank you, George. You're welcome. So we just got in our 1973 Challenger that I bought. This is gonna be the car that we're gonna to convert to look like a 71, and it's gonna end up going to SEMA with the world famous Hellcat engine in it. John Buck's been a customer now for quite a while. We did uh, his 71 Challenger with the formal back roof, beautiful car. So now that the car's here, I'm gonna get it moved around to the other side where we're disassembling cars, uh, round up cousin Dougie and uh, daughter Alyssa and we're gonna get that thing disassembled. It needs to be disassembled so the body guys can start on it while we're gone at the Little Creek Casino show. So that's gotta happen this week. The Plymouth Superbird was created specifically for NASCAR, which meant they had to manufacture a minimum number of 1,920 cars to meet NASCAR's homologation requirement. Every one of those models manufactured and shipped to the US dealerships came with a vinyl top. So why did all Superbirds have vinyl tops? Was it they were more aerodynamic, or they had an extra roof material, or to hide unfinished bodywork? The answer, coming up after the break. So why did all Superbirds have vinyl tops? The answer is, instead of finishing the bodywork around the area around the rear window plug, which is a Superbird only feature, it was faster and cheaper to install a vinyl top. Getting ready to tear apart the 1973 Dodge Challenger. This car I bought for the sole purpose of making it into our 71 Challenger RT tribute car with the badass Hellcat engine in it. So all we've got to do is change the fender, fender side markers out, quarter panel side markers, rear body panel, and the nose piece on it here. We'll get this out of the way and put regular Challenger grill in there. And we've got a 71. So cousin Dougie, cousin Alyssa, we're gonna disassemble it in 27 minutes. Okay. So wait, what are we? We're gonna assemble the car, Mary. Okay. Yeah, so we're All taking right. it, this is a 73. Half inch. He doesn't care, he never looks. Nine sixteenths. I'm gonna start doing the Three inch extension. Else. Impact, go. So let's just start taking the uh, doors off. In this particular case, Oh, the so the reason behind taking those doors off first is it gives you so much access to everything. Doors gotta come off anyway, right? So if you get them off, get them out of the way, then you have full access to everything. The back of the fender bolts that hold it in place, the, the dash assembly, the things that you have to get to to be able to pull the interior out. It's just one of the very first things that we take off the car. <laughs> Sweet mother of pearl. I needed to crank it a little harder. What has happened? What have you done to my machine, W? I don't know, Mark. I don't it's know. going, buddy, it's going, it's going, it's going. Don't get crazy on me. Yeah, well, cousin Dougie, as I call him, is my cousin Doug, uh, Doug Oldham. We grew up together. I've known him, obviously, since I was a baby, and uh, he's a phenomenal technician. Me and cousin Dougie go way back, way back time machine, working on cars. You go back to when Doug and I were kids, all we worked on was Mopars. I mean, if something else, if a Brand X we called it came along, we'd do what we had to if it meant to flip it or, or get it running for somebody. But we were always Mopar. His very first one was a 70 Barracuda, Grand Coupe 318 four-speed. My very first Mopar was a 1970 Dodge Charger 383 two-barrel car. So it's so never gonna it do off. it. So, so you start undoing the, the bolts in the doors, and if that door starts to sag, just crank it up a little bit, Alyssa. Okay. Okay. Since the point of this build with the Hellcat is to duplicate John's original car, let's take a look at his fender tag. 
Forget the E65 and the D32. We're not doing a 383 HP and an automatic 727. Let's go down to the things that make it really stand out that you know it's his car or looks like it. FJ6 Green Go Paint. V1X Full Black Vinyl Top. The A78, the very rare formal roof package. We got G33, a left hand outside chrome mirror. H51 air conditioning. Now that won't show on the outside, but it'll be important to the driver. J45 hood pin tie downs. J54 sport hood. N41, N42, that's your dual exhaust with bright tips. And the most obvious part, the V6X, the longitudinal black stripe. So those are the important codes to watch for as we build this car out for Mr. John Buck. Just start unbolting everything, getting it out of the... Everything. Yeah, and put it on that, uh, put what you can on that cart over there with the pad. Around Graveyard Cars now, we have so many cars. We have so many vendors, so much stuff's available that was never available. So when we're starting like on the disassembly of the engine compartment, cut that wiring harness out of there. We're gonna put a new engine wiring harness, a new headlamp harness in it. We're gonna put a correct date coded voltage regulator. We're gonna restore the wiper. Now we don't throw it away, we restore it. But a lot of the stuff under there, we're never gonna use again. So we cut it out and we throw it away. It makes it a lot faster and it takes up less room in the end. It's a 73, so it has quite a bit more stuff on it than the 7071s. Like that Where's the rubber canister. mallet at? Huh? Where's the rubber mallet? To help get, I'm not strong enough to do the first turn. Let me see what you got. I don't really know what to think of Doug yet. I've, he's just a man of few words. He doesn't speak very much. He's not, he's nothing like my dad. <laughs> Good hinges are the same from 70 to 74. So we'll just set a pile here that we're gonna put back in the car when we're done. See these studs? Uh-huh. They started, they used these on the AAR and the TAs. And then later in the years, they started using them on the regular cars instead of just bolts going down through there. I think it was to hold the fender in place for assembly line purposes. I don't yeah. know. But it's interesting to see how they changed their philosophy as they went along. Coming up, Mark and the Ghouls continue the disassembly of the 1973 Challenger. Good luck. Oh, this ain't gonna work. And take a look at some of the differences between it and its older relatives. And Mark tries to convince the ghouls to take the bus up to Little Creek. I'm not riding in this thing up to Washington. Here are some interesting facts about the 1973 Dodge Challenger that you probably didn't know. There is no question that the 1972 Dodge Challenger suffered a lot of styling and option cues from the previous years of 70 and 71. However, in 1973, they continued declining that finally in 74 led up to the end of the Dodge Challenger. So let's just look at the 73. It's the first year they put these hideous, god awful huge bumper guards on the front and the rear of the car. The very first thing the owners of those cars did was took them off and put on the 70 and 71 style bumper, which was much sleeker and cooler looking. It also happened to be the very last year that you could get the world famous, renowned 340 cubic inch engine. Sadly, that was it. It was also the very last year you could get the Slant 6, which also two really cool engine assemblies that Mopar had tried and tested were now gone. Another sad fact was the tachometer. They went from the cool 8,000 RPM, but they felt like that that was encouraging people to drive too fast. Obviously, the engines could still turn the RPM, but they went from an 8,000 RPM tack down to a 7,000 RPM tack. Ultimately, one of the things that I thought was most sad was Mopar was known for its high impact colors. 1973 was the last year for TB3, which was the Petty Blue or Super Blue. So that left for the time-honored high impact colors, FY1 Top Banana Yellow. So that, if you add all those up, you can see the decline of the Dodge Challenger. And by 1974, mid-year through, by the way, that car was out of there. So far, Dave has buttoned up the underside of the Challenger. The vinyl top was installed for our tribute Superbird. And Mark and Alyssa have begun the disassembly of the 1973 Challenger with the intention of converting it to a 1971 equipped with a Hellcrate Hemi. The Challenger's coming along great, just moving right along, no big problems yet, uh, just trying to knock out this interior just got the dashboard in, so that's a big piece to this puzzle. So uh, it's just a matter of getting the console in, the seats, 
uh, the door panels and pretty much the interior is gonna be done. And then all I gotta do is put some exhaust underneath this and uh, she's gonna be ready to fire up. Uh, you know, I had kind of expectations of, uh, you know, having it actually ready to fire up tomorrow by noon. Uh, I'm gonna be really close. So as long as I don't get any hiccups today or any really bad problems, which I don't foresee happening, uh, I think I'm gonna be uh, pretty much where I wanna be tomorrow at noon, so looking good. Uh, the 1970 Dodge Challenger, what, what makes it really cool to me is in high school, I had this identical car, uh, but it was a convertible. So that's, that's the cool factor for me. Uh, the 70 and 71s I really like. When they went to 72, that grill turned over, and I think because it lost all its, its horsepower and everything, the car was actually frowning. The 70, it's, it's, it's got that really cool grill on it. And uh, of course, you know, it's the same car I had in high school. That's what uh, would make the 70 special to me as far as the Challenger goes. Uh, Willow Creek, uh, we have so much fun up there. Uh, last year was fantastic. Uh, what I'm probably looking forward to most this year is, is of course, the fans. Uh, we do a two hour sign in and shoot the line stretches all the way around the building. And it's just great to just, you know, kick back and, and talk to guys about cars. And that's what we're there for, you know, is to, uh, for the fans. and to talk cars and that's what it's all about. Some of the guys are asking, you know, about uh, reimbursement and stuff for fuel and, and some, you know, some of the things. And, and so Mark came up with the idea of, of getting that school bus. So I don't know, I just, it kind of flashbacks when I was in elementary school as a kid and, you know, sitting down on basically a piece of cardboard and, or plywood and getting bounced around in that thing. And uh, yeah, I just, I just can't see that happening. I mean, I'm not 12 years old anymore and the body's not as, uh, as limber as it was whenever I was younger, so. When we were kids growing up on South 4th Street, Dougie made me complicit in a uh, go-kart heist. Had a little go-kart setting in an alley. It was, Doug decided it was, we'd save him a trip to the dump. So we helped ourselves to that little thing. Went up to his house, started putting it together. He had an old Suzuki 185. Took the engine off that, fabricated it on there so we could run a Suzuki 185 on that little thing. Worked on it for weeks, weeks, and weeks, and weeks, all summer, work, work, work. Finally, we're down to the exhaust. All we got left is the exhaust. Well, the problem is we didn't engineer it very well. <laughs> So the motor went right into the back, which is where your seat is. So the exhaust went right here. Nice little bullseye on your back. Yeah? Not enough room for a pipe to come out and go around, so we just ran the exhaust right into our back. Kept us warm in the winter. Dougie got it running, right. went on a maiden voyage up the driveway, up to the top of the hill, gone about an hour, came coasting back down into the garage, said he busted the case, and that was the end of the golf cart days. I never even got to play with it. I never even got to ride it. Reminiscing about the old days is awesome. It's fun. It's some of the best times we have. Great memories. The stuff that we're sharing with everybody right now are truly stories that happen because he wanted to go trail hopping on a go-kart <laughs> with street tires. Of course, they're subject to 50-year-old memories. And it could be embellishing a little, not a lot. How much of that's true? Try to keep factual about my stuff. More than 30. usual? Nah, horse 30. pucky. Horse pucky. <laughs> I got witnesses. Yeah? Yeah. Don't make me call him. You know who I'm talking about. He lives on the corner. Your sister? No. <laughs> I got her, too. And I got Uncle Doug, and I got Vinny. I got anybody I want to ask about that. I'm going to tell the truth what happened. True or false, the Plymouth Superbird was built to lure back Richard Petty, the king, from Ford. Think you know the answer? Find out after the break. So, was the Plymouth Superbird built to lure back Richard Petty from Ford? The answer is true. When the Dodge Daytonas came out, Petty wanted one, but he was told no by Plymouth. In response, Petty left Plymouth and started racing for Ford. So to lure him back, Plymouth built their own wing car, the Superbird. All right, we've almost got the wiring harness ready to come out. So right now, uh, Cousin Dougie and the fruit of my loin, Alyssa, are disassembling the 73 Challenger. It's taken a little longer than I'd hoped it would, but uh, as long as we get it knocked out today, I think we're in good shape. It's good. 
clips, we always replace them, so that's ready to go. The main reason we replace the wiring harnesses is a safety issue. We've got 50-year-old wiring harnesses in a lot of cases. That stuff, the insulation gets hard, it gets brittle, doesn't have the ability to hold the voltage. It could short out easier than a fresh one. So what we do is put brand new ones in and take out that possibility of burning a car to the ground because we wanted to save a 50-year-old wiring harness. We're burning daylight. Burning daylight, don't want to do that. My dad likes to set these unrealistic goals and then he likes to blame everybody else when it doesn't work out. This what is all ready to come out. Minutes, I think Power we've... steering is ready to come out. <laughs> Probably exceeded that. Cut that hose. I like assembling cars, but disassembly is fun too because you can get out here and get your hands dirty. But if I had to choose one or the other, it'd be assembly. Okay, K member is ready to come out. Because it's warm in there and you're working with, it's prettier. I know that's gonna, I'm gonna get made fun of for that answer, but the cars are prettier and it's not an easier job, but hands on wise, it's a little easier than out here in the cold, tearing apart a car. You have that right there. Mm -hmm. Go underneath there with a half inch and undo the seat bolts for the front seats. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. I'm done with this. I want a more powerful gun. <laughs> what? You want, you want one of these big, big guns. guns? Yes, I do. Okay. Let's get the job done. Yeah. Dumpster lid. Uh, Chrysler made significant changes uh, to the outside of the E-bodies, just like they did all of their cars. But you could never mistake a 72 Barracuda to a 71 or a 70 because the side markers would give it away. Tail lights would give it away. Grill would give it away. Um, the tail lights are a lot sexier in 70 and 71 on a Challenger than they were in 72 on, and on through 74. Same thing with the grill. You look at a 72 to 74 Challenger and they call it the frowny face. It's got this big upside down frowny face where the 70 and the 71 are sexy as hell. So uh, yeah, there were styling changes. The rest of the car, pretty much the same for the most part. Intricate little changes, but for the most part, the same other than exterior ornamentation. I got a little change in my pocket. My dad's singing is as good as his dancing. Terrible. 1978. Cousin Dougie. Oh no. Suzuki TM400. Known in the circle today as the world's most dangerous motocross bike. All horsepower, no steering, no handling, no brakes. All horsepower. Riding it up at the little track we made at the top of the hill. I'm minding my own business on my little Honda CL100, which I had to buy myself, unlike somebody's TM400. And making li tri trips around the track. Doug comes out of the third corner. I'm over in the second corner. I look over, I see him, and he's and he's just got that grin, that crazy grin he'd get. Big, dumb grin. <laughs> you know the kind of grin, right? And then he hoses that throttle and just sits on, duct tapes it in place, wide open. Goes along, just snorts out from under him, drops him like a bad habit, bends the handlebar, tears up his brand new motorcycle. Does any of that ring a bell? Tell him about the laughter I got after that. There was a lot of laughter. <laughs> Thing kicked him off. You ever been kicked off a horse? You ever been kicked off a horse? Yeah. <laughs> what you doing, Mary? Having a little trouble there? Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Screws. Do I need to like, keep wow. on this? Or? Look this? how much that yeah. color faded yeah. from the original. The sun has always been one of the, an automobile's worst enemy. 
On the paint, it beats them to death. This is the UV rays beat them until a point where there's no pigment left in the paint and they begin to either flake or, or they're just faded out to where you can't even tell what color they are. See that, Doug? Yeah. The sun line? Uh-huh. That's original and that's been exposed to the sun. Wow. It's a lot of difference. Sure is. It's a nice panel. It's a nice trim panel. It's not all chalked out like a lot of them are. Oh, there's some doobie in here. Let's say there's doobie in here. Woo! That's the best, Nothing isn't it? Nothing makes me happier. Now, I never even tried it. Never even puffed it or any of that weird stuff. My mother, still alive and kicking, 83 years old. She said, if, if you do drugs, if you do any, I will kill you. And I had no reason not to believe her. We found a doobie in a 69 Coronet RT that we did years ago, way back in the original pilot. Dougie may have sampled it, you know, kind of like a one of those little sampler chocolate things, you know, that you get where you might, you know, try a little something. Royal, uh, frankly, Royal should have gave uh, Peru the money up front, and he'd have a piece of property today. Now, was it just a roach? Did it actually have doobie in it? No, it, it, it was uh, doobies that had gotten stuck down the A-pillar moldings. OK, so my understanding between a doobie and a roach, a uh, roach is an already smoked doobie that's about to be re-smoked. That's, why are you laughing? <laughs> that's what it is. Oh, so they'd stay neat. unless you vibrate it too much and they fall down. Oh. And uh, Royal took them and smoked them. 60-year-old doobie. Oh, man. That's great doobie. I don't know. I don't. I plead the fifth. If I if I found a six-year-old doobie, I'd smoke it right then. It's you only, should. It's only right. You should. Right yeah, there. Yeah, I think it's a sin not to. Disassembling. Exactly. You gotta light it up. Got another cart back there, wide open for us too. All right, guys, it's 5 o'clock. Mount Mary, yeah. it's not. Go get. It's 5 o'clock. Go get a pair of needle. You know, the argument that it's 5 o'clock, it's 5 o'clock somewhere everywhere, right? Check over in Brazil, d down in Australia. It's always 5 o'clock somewhere. Doesn't mean you just drop trowel and just take off running. You know, this ain't the Flintstones. You ain't gonna slide down the dinosaur's back and scream yabba dabba do at 5 o'clock when the whistle blows. We got stuff to do. 458, you got me for another 120. 458. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha Where are you going? to get a pair of needle nose vice grips. OK, Doug, I'm going to say bye now, because as soon as I have a chance to escape, I'm out. Have a good night, Alyssa. <laughs> you too. Why don't you and your little lamb get in there? And... Are you guys quitting on me? Yeah. What the hell? It's why not? not? Why not? It's not even 5 o'clock. That's why not. So the bottom line, end of story, the end of the day, whatever little metaphor you want to use, I say when it's quitting time. Drill, we'll drill it out. All right, we'll do it tomorrow. How about that? Sounds good. And you guys cut right there, and it's like really dramatic. So don't leave that part in where I told you to cut right there, because then that just makes me look like an idiot. Let's just leave everything out here, and we'll pick up in the morning. Sound I good? like it. I like it. OK. All right, I got my accurate exhaust in for our 70 Dodge Challenger, so I'm getting ready to put it in. This is the big one, the big green, the enchilada. This is the mother bear of them all right here. All numbers matching. Gonna trick it out, gonna make it nice. Uh, you know, this doesn't surprise me with Mark rolling this bus right now. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not riding in this thing up to Washington. Yeah, you just, if you could just bottom line me, that would be great. I, I, I like the whole menu thing and people get confused, but just, just the bottom line. That's what I give my clients, the bottom line. Yeah. Not that bottom line. I'm definitely going to drive. I will not ride in that bus. And he's talking about modifying it and making it really cool and stuff like that. But I don't see that happening. But uh, I think I'll, I'll drive myself. This is, uh, I don't want to say it. This is Mark Warman. Warman from Graveyard Cars. on Velocity, it's a cable network. 
I don't even know what, what came across its mind for this to be a good idea, but this is a horrible idea, and I guarantee you, there's not one person in the shop that's gonna ride in the box. It's a reality TV show. Yeah, like the Kardashians, all right. I, uh, I'll be in touch. Okay, goodbye. So, uh, probably doesn't have a television. Uh, got all the exhaust in the 70 Dodge Challenger. Didn't have any problems. Everything just went in, you know, just like it's supposed to. So. Looking good. So that's one more notch in the old belt. So I'll uh, move on to something else. So all I pretty much got right now is just a couple door panels and some back window and the front windshield put in this car and it's done. So looking good. I think things went really well. Very proud of Dave, as usual. You 70 were out Challenger I couldn't RT. Find you anywhere. Yeah. One of 916 <laughs> made, probably only one or two made in Los Angeles, and probably the only one in the world with that color combination. He got the Z bar put in, he got all the clutch linkage done to wrapped up the bottom side of the car, so we're getting very close to being able to deliver that. In regards to finding me, I'm gonna give you a little clue. I'm everywhere. No, you're not, you're nowhere. Put your lips together for a second. And I'm nowhere. So you figure that out. That's like a Chinese riddle. Okay, you're, you're looking for me. Bus. I'm everywhere. What does that mean? Well, it was a. You're uh, out messing around. It's a party bus. It's what they call a tour bus <laughs> or a limo bus. You're gonna be on that by yourself. Wow. When I first looked, I thought there's gonna be more room because I saw you in here. But ain't I never can't. gonna die. We're gonna party all the time. The funny thing was, you got so excited I mean, about the bus, you wanted to drive it. You weren't looking for a Why bus. Why are you taking the emergency brake off and rolling What's down? Happening? Sweet dog. That's fine. She wants to ride the bus, but she can't drive the bus. She's like Chris Farley from uh, <laughs> Billy Madison. She's constantly eating. She backs up, blocks traffic for 20 miles. Can't it's find a lot more harder forward gear. To drive a bus than one would think. As well, clearly, as you saw, I may very well out. now because you ratted me out to everybody because you can't keep your big Nobody fat mouth shut. Wanted to ride. More importantly, that bus, Dad. you've got light fingers. All right. Light fingers means you're a kleptomaniac. You can't keep your fingers out of other people's stuff. You're, okay. you're a thief. No. A criminal. But yours is mine. You're my yeah. dad. Little Creek Casino was great, though. Little Creek Casino, though, was a great time. We always love our time up there. Picking the cool cars. I went with the 1971 Dodge Charger 444 speed. How many of those were made? Nine. Yeah. yeah. Rewriting history again. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal show. We had a lot of fun. Thank you very much <laughs> to those guys. They always roll out the carpet for us. Uh, Alyssa gets drunk anytime we leave the premises, so she was drunk the entire time. I have a couple cool. drinks. Yeah, I same as being Will. drunk. I didn't drink okay. anything. You know how I unwind? I NyQuil. sleep. No, I don't drink NyQuil. What am I, a NyQuil addict? Yes. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Where are you going? Are we done? We're done?